And we're back. Our guest on this segment is Daniel Sullivan with the Grand River Dam Authority. Daniel, it's good to have you back, my friend. Thank you. It's been a while. It. it has. How you doing? Very good. Uh, we're uh, we're glad to have some rain to help fill up the lakes. Make sure we've got uh, places for people to come and have a good time this you summer. You bet. Makes you want to go to church again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we call it kilowatts from the sky. There you are. That works every time. It's just for the sake of discussion, because I'm sure there are a lot of folks that really aren't familiar with it. Can you define the Grand River Dam Authority? Well, it's, it's a very good question. It's something that I get asked a lot. Uh, the, the Grand River Dam Authority was created in 1935 by the Oklahoma legislature. So we are an agency of the state, but we are a non-appropriated agency. So we do not receive any money from the state. Uh, all of the proceeds that we receive from the sale of electricity and water is what uh, funds our operations. So we were originally created to be a conservation and reclamation district of the, the waters of the Grand River. And then as Pensacola Dam was built that creates Grand Lake, we built uh, the Kerr Dam that creates Lake Hudson, a pump storage facility on, near Salina, uh, and then our coal units and other uh, types of generation. You know, we've grown into a much larger utility on top of all the other water-related activities mm -hmm. that we do. I, I've got to ask this, with all the attention being given right now to putting <clears throat> coal miners back to work, are we going to continue to utilize coal or are we going to make the switch over to natural gas? Well, we've, uh, we've been making a change in the, the mixture of our generation portfolio. So we've relied very heavily over the years on coal. We have two coal units at our plant in Choteau. Uh, one of those uh, is will only run right now through April 15th of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to stop running it as a coal unit unless something changes. Uh, but we are also building a new natural gas combined cycle plant right next to it. Uh, that is going to be taking up the slack uh, from our unit one production. And I think it will be a great asset oh, yeah. for us going forward. But we'll still have another coal unit, so we'll have a good diversity with the wind and hydro and other uh, all, generation that we have. All kinds of sources there. Then if you are not really a state agency, you guys don't really have to worry about cutbacks in terms of uh, people or reduced budgets in, from the state. Well, it's not quite that easy because uh, we are oh, subject please tell to... tell me it is. <laughs> tell me it is. Uh, be, because we are subject to the, the governor's executive orders, so we still, even though the state does not pay any of our salaries, doesn't pay my salary or mm -hmm. anyone else that works for GRDA, we still have to go through the process of getting all those approved and uh, before we can ever hire anyone. So we... we we still deal with some of the same issues, but fortunately we haven't had to deal with the budget cuts. You know, because we're reliant on our own income, it's, it's based on you know, how we're performing and how well we're doing in the marketplace. But you seem to be doing well. We are. I mean, we've, we've, had, uh, we've had some challenges this last year. We had a lightning strike that took out one of our coal units. I remember. Uh, and then, you know, we're in the process of building this other unit. So we've got a lot of activity going, but we still ended on a very strong financial uh, picture, you know, through 2016. So we have, uh, you know, challenges, mm -hmm. but uh, we certainly feel like uh, we're in, in very good position. We've got a great team. Tell me something, Daniel. What's, what's this... What's this talk I hear about the possible or possibility of GRDA being sold <clears throat> or being for sale? Is there anything to that? Well, you know, it, it, the, the funny you, you mentioned that because there was actually a bill that was introduced in this legislature this year uh, that would look at that. Uh, the, the interesting thing about that, since about 1940, when the dam was completed, every governor since Red Phillips has asked the question, what are we going to do with GRDA? Um, and so it, I take it as an opportunity to do a better job of educating people, letting them know what the value of GRDA is, what do we do, what impact do we have on communities like Claremore, we serve as your electric provider here. Uh, so these lights and, and cameras and everything in this studio are powered by electricity generated by the Grand River Dam Authority. Well, see, I know for a fact that you wear a white hat. 
you're one of the nicest individuals I've ever met to be in a position you're in. There's no cutthroat to you. So you won't say anything bad. I can. <laughs> what, I think that's such a dumb idea to even consider getting rid of an agency such as GRDA. I think it's foolish. Well, you know, it, it, everyone comes at it from a different point of view. You know, some people philosophically say, why is the state in the electric business? And, mm -hmm. that's, and that's a good question. I submit the state's not in the electric business. Exactly. There is an agency that provides uh, those opportunities to communities like Claremore and others uh, so that they can have their own utility systems and have an, an extra avenue for revenue. But, you know, if, if you look at what we do, and the functions that we provide, you know, we, we provide law enforcement on the lakes and the, now the rivers, now that the Scenic Rivers Commission is folded into GRDA. We provide water quality work on all the water that we have responsibility for, lake management. So we spend about $11 million a year on state functions mm -hmm. that would otherwise be back on the budget of the state of Oklahoma and the, the taxpayers as a whole don't pay for those functions. So it's, it's a really good bargain uh, for what the state gets uh, and it gives us the opportunity to you know, fulfill a mission that probably wouldn't be done in the same manner uh, because of the budget cuts and the restraints that have been oh, out there. I hear you. And you know, I'm one of those who take advantage of folks like you. I'm out there trying to kill as many fish in, as I can and then eat them, right. you know, because I, I, I do, I fish frequently mm -hmm. in, our, in our rivers and streams. And I worry that the changes going on at EPA could impact Oklahoma in terms of, uh, you know, clean streams, clean rivers and all that. And so my concerns are there. And I never, and I, I apologize for this, but I never think about the possibility of losing you guys, hmm. you know, which would, I think, be a sin. So I, I am grateful for you. I'm tickled to death you're here. Well, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and talk about, you know, what's going on. I know, you know we, now that we've taken on the role of, of the scenic rivers, you know, I've become a little more familiar with some of the things that have happened. And I'll tell you that you know, one of the good things is that Scott Pruitt, when he was the attorney general, did finally come to an agreement with the state of Arkansas on, on how to oh, reduce, you, Lord. <laughs> you know, reduce, yeah. uh, you know, some of the pollutants that have been in the Illinois River system. So, uh, I, I don't think that some of the wringing of hands that have happened uh, about him being uh, named as the EPA administrator are probably going to oh, come through as much as, as some on, people think. See what I'm doing? I'm sit, <laughs> sitting on my hand right here, Daniel. <laughs> hey, buddy, I appreciate you coming in, and it's always good to hear from you. Keep us posted on changes as they come to pass, and let's get you back again, okay? Do it. I'm glad to do it any time. You're Thank a good you, man. I don't care what anybody says. All right. Thank you. We're going to take a short break because there's big doings with the Claremore Hall of Fame. We're going to take a look at them right after this.